Welcome everybody to the studio. My name is Allison Jensen and I am the owner of Orange Easel School of Art and I'm here today with a chalk pastel lesson coming at you live from the Zoom platform. So we actually have a class going on on Zoom. I've got my students here on Zoom and then we're gonna stream it to Facebook. I had them turn their cameras off for privacy reasons, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna do the lesson here on Facebook Live and then um, we'll go off of Facebook and continue our lesson um, in class on Zoom. So let me pull up, just wanna make sure that I am actually live on Orange Easel's Facebook page. This is important, you know, stuff like that. Hey, there I am. It's always so fun to see me live on Facebook. There we go, awesome. So if you have a comment, I've got my Facebook dashboard over here and I've got my Zoom dashboard over here. So all of my Zoom participants, you can do it in the chat. If you have a question or a comment, um, if you wanna um, talk about something, you need me to slow down, you can put that in the chat and I will see it up here. Also, any of my Facebook people who are following along, you can put yours in the Facebook comments and that way I will see that as well. So I'm so glad that you are here to join me tonight. We're gonna go over the supplies that you're gonna need for those of you who are following along and then um, and we'll just dive right in. So super fun. Okay, let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rearrange my windows really quick. How's that? Because I feel like we're just, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I gotta be able to see everything because I hate to, I hate to miss any of you. That's not working. Okay, we'll go with that. Fabulous. All right, let's go over supplies for everybody tonight. You are going to need some chalk pastels, soft chalk pastels. You wanna use um, a set that has a decent amount of colors in it. Mine here, well, I'm, we're gonna go over colors with you. I actually have a photo reference. You're probably only gonna need about eight colors tonight. Um, and we'll talk through which ones and options. If you don't have an orange, you can use a pink. If you don't have a blue, you can use a purple, vice versa. So we'll talk through those here in just a second, but you will need a set of chalk pastels. We're also gonna be using some paper. Now, when I do chalk pastels, I love to use toned paper. So I have some options here because as I told my Zoom people, I just couldn't decide. When I did my example one, I went ahead and did it on black paper, which is kind of my go-to, but I feel like I wanna try something new. So I might go gray or I might go blue. The only concern I have with the blue is when we start to put sun rays of yellow in this blue, we might end up with green. And that's not good. Skies should not be green, especially if you live in the Midwest. So I don't know, I'm leaning towards gray. I have about two more minutes to make my decision, but you'll want some sort of toned paper instead of white. And then you want it to have a little bit of a tooth to it. So I'm just using regular construction paper. Um, if you really get into chalk pastels, they make paper just for chalk pastels, which are, is beautiful and gorgeous. But in the meantime, all of the construction paper works. I am gonna tape my construction paper onto a board just because it's easier for me to work with um, and to pick up and show and lift closer to the camera. But you don't have to tape it down. It's not like we're doing watercolors and your paper is gonna buckle or anything like that. I have also just a towel here half of it is damp and half of it is dry so that when my fingers get really messy i can wipe them off here on the towel and then i can dry them off on the other side you could also have two towels but you don't want wet fingers when you go into your chalk pastels but you also really don't want them to be really messy um because that's how you get muddy colors just like paint right you mix up all your colors and you end up with brown so i have my my little washcloth here as well does anybody on facebook or on zoom have any questions before we jump right in to, to what we're going to do. And Miss Allison has to pick her, has to pick her paper color. <laughs> I'm about, I don't know, 20 seconds behind usually on Facebook. So I just want to make sure that I don't go too fast because otherwise my Facebook people kind of get left in the dust. So we'll just make sure I don't go too fast for them. And then we'll dive right in. All right. Well, while we're thinking, and if you have questions, you can put them there, okay? While we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and tape my paper down. And I, I'm gonna go with blue. You guys, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it. I realize that it may, it may not work, but you, know, you don't know to try. So blue paper it is. Switch my camera view so you guys can see my overhead. I got two cameras here and with any luck, this works. Let's find out. So we got my, my blue paper down here and I'm just gonna give myself some tape. If this was a watercolor class, I would tape all the way around it. It's not a watercolor class. So I'm just gonna tape my little corners. Yeah, you can use white paper. So I've got 
Elaine asking me if she can use white paper. You absolutely can. Typically in chalk pastels, most artists will use something that has a little bit of a tone to it, usually a neutral tone, not a blue like this. Um, but because it just adds a little bit of a richness, if you think of it like, um, okay, so you're gonna paint your kitchen. And I know this because I did this to my kitchen, right? Rather than, and you're gonna paint it a deep, deep red. You prime it with a deep base. You don't prime it with white. Um, because if you prime it with white, um, when you put your red on, you end up with pink and you don't get that rich, vibrant color. So when we're, when we're working with our chalk pastels, if we start with a deep base, um, our colors have a richness to them as opposed to a pastel quality. So that's why we do that. But you can definitely just use white paper tonight. Um, I think the lesson will work just fine. So don't even worry about it. Okay, so it looks like everything is showing up on Facebook, which I love. I love it when technology works, you guys. Doesn't always, doesn't always work for me. Tonight, 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 the Facebook gods are working for me. I have a photo reference just off of Google Images that we're gonna use as um, inspiration. It's not, it's not exact. You can see I used it for this picture here too. And I took some creative licensing with some of the colors. We're gonna do that here again tonight, um, especially with my blue paper down here. <laughs> the next step that we need to do is we need to pick our colors, right? So this is where I need you to get out your box of colors. This one's mine right here. And we're gonna pick out kind of the different sections that we have in our picture and the colors we're gonna use to represent them, okay? So the first thing you'll notice is there is, there is some light areas in here, right? We've got the sun rays, we've got the bright highlight of the clouds, and we've got the middle of the sun, which we always think is yellow, but it's not, it's white, all right? So we're gonna need a, we're gonna need a white. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna find my white. My white is kind of dirty here. So this is another reason why we have a, a towel here. We'll go ahead and clean that off so it actually is white instead of gray. There we go. So now I've got a white. Yeah, got to have that. I'm just going to set the colors I'm going to use right off to the side. Fingers are already messy. Woo, let's pick another color. Okay, in my sky. In my sky, I have a grayish, bluish color. What color should I use for that? Um, you can do anything, right? So if I wanted to, I could use a purple for that. That'd be really pretty. Ooh, I'm tempted. Tempted to use a purple, right? It's not that I have to match these colors exactly. What I need to match though is the value, right? So it's not a really dark color. Um, it's kind of a neutral, has a little brown in it. I could also go with this. This might be a little bit light. That one's, that one's a really light sky blue. I could also go with this one. This is a gray. So you kind of pick your color. So it's kind of a middle tone. I'm gonna go with the purple and put that right there. And I'll put these up close to the camera um, all together so you can see my color combination when we get going. I need, what should we do? We need a dark. See these clouds in here? So aside from the, sorry, reading the chat, trying to talk at the same time. Um, aside from the foreground, right? Where you see the, the trees right here in the foreground, which we're basically gonna do in black. Aside from those, this line of clouds is probably one of the darkest parts of the picture. So what color should we use there? When I did this one, you can see I used a nice deep dark teal. That was kind of fun. I think I'm gonna go less on the green route and more on the purple route this time. So this blue that I used last time has a lot of green in it. Let's see if I can find a blue that has more purple in it. I'm gonna go with that one. That's a fun one. See, that didn't even focus. Let me try, there it is. There it is. I wish that that had a little more brown to it, um, but I don't think I have one. It's just a very, very intense color that I have there. Oh, wait, maybe this one. What's this one? No, nope, that one has green in it. We'll go with that one. That'll work. All right, so I got a, a really great blue. And then I got this area underneath here. I think I could go pink. I could go orange. And you know, I love orange. I really do. I really do. I love this color. It's kind of dirty because I used it last time, but look at that color. Can you see that color? You can get it on camera. Oh, that's such a pretty color. It's like neon coral. That's what I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick that one for kind of this area in my sky. Now this area in my sky has, it has other colors in it, right? Kind of has a band of that purpley gray for some of the, the clouds. Um, so we'll do that by mixing in some of the purple color. So just kind of the base color. I probably will need a yellow right around this sun. 
about the only place I'll use the yellow. And I wanna pick my brightest yellow that I have. So that's this one right here, my bright lemon yellow, one that has the most white in it and the one that's the brightest. I also have one here that maybe has almost a little bit of orange in it. It's more like a canary yellow instead of a lemon yellow. Uh, but I'm gonna go with that one. So I'll put that one over there. Every time I work with chalk pastels, you guys, my nose starts to itch and then I end up with, <laughs> I end up with chalk all over my nose. <laughs> doesn't itch the rest of the day, but it itches when I do this. All right, we've got two more colors to pick. Maybe only one. I don't know. Let's see. Because see these mountains back here or these hills kind of in the landscape? There's, there's a couple layers of them. There's, there's one behind the silhouette in the front. Hmm. I'm going to use the same color maybe that I used for the clouds. So I'll go ahead and stick with the blue there for consistency. I might tone it down a little bit with the purple so it's not quite so vibrant. Um, and then I need something that's even darker for this area in this front for the, for the trees. So I'm gonna go straight black with that. I could also go with like a forest green if I wanted to. Um, and I might end up blending a little bit of green in there, but for now, this will be my color scheme. So let me show you what it looks like. I'm gonna put it here on my board and then I'll put it up close to the camera so you guys can see it. So these are the colors that I have chosen. Now you might have different colors, but what we're definitely looking for, if we were to put them in order of value, right? We would have the black, the dark color, like this is the darkest, right? Those are the trees, the dark color. That's like the, that's the, the band of clouds in the sky. This is that middle tone that's in the sky. These two colors are gonna be our super fun light colors that are very warm. And then the white, of course. We got some white that has to happen. All right. So that's all you're looking for. Like I said, your, your cloud color might be a purple color. Um, your cloud color might be a gray color. That's okay. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna move these off to the side. And we might, we might get out some more colors later, but these will be the basic ones. I'm just gonna set them off to the side and try not to lose them. My hands are already a mess. I've barely started. They're, this chalk pastels, you guys, are so messy. <laughs> they, are, they are messier than paint. <laughs> Let me rearrange my stuff just a little bit because I wanna make sure everybody can see everything. I'm gonna slide some things around and then I'm gonna do some zooming. Ready? Let's see what we can do. I gotta, I gotta stand up in my chair here and zoom in my camera. Maybe not quite that far. I need like a remote. It'd be really cool if I had a remote, but I don't. So I don't even know if they make one of those for your phones. Maybe. You ready to do some drawing? The nice thing about this drawing is it is so forgiving, okay? I went ahead and I cut my paper to a square because my picture was also kind of square-ish shape. But if your paper is a rectangle, I don't want you to freak out about it, okay? You just kind of keep your drawing in the center of a square. Mine is a nine by nine square, only because my construction paper was nine by 12. So I cut you know three inches off the long edge. And that's how we ended up with this, all right? Let's do a little bit of drawing. I'm gonna grab my white and I'm gonna draw with white. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I've got dark paper here. If you are using a light color piece of paper, I would grab one of your middle tones. So I wouldn't draw with black, you know, that would not be good, but I would draw with a middle, a middle tone, okay? Okay, the first thing we're gonna put in is this just, just kind of mark in where this band of clouds goes, okay? So it's a diagonal line that kind of cuts across the middle-ish of the paper, edge to edge, right? On my example one that I did, I cut my picture in the center. And if you would like to do that, you can. So I'll give you that example, see? So I didn't, I didn't go all the way to the outside edge. This one, since I have it taped to the board, I'll probably go edge to edge. No wrong way though, honestly, no wrong way, okay? Let's mark in where the sun is. That's important. I'm going to put it right here. I want you to understand nobody is going to see this photo when they look at your art. So they're not going to be like, oh man, you didn't, you didn't get the sun in the right place, right? 
they're not going to care. They're just going to be like, wow, look at that chalk pastel picture. It looks so good. All right, next I'm going to do this far off hill. And I'm just making it up because honestly, I can't see it. It just, it just, it's back there, you know? <laughs> It's it's lower on the left and it's a little higher on the right. And then there's some trees in front of it. I'm not even gonna draw those trees in front of it because I'll do them later. And maybe, maybe we'll kind of go, okay, there's something here and there's something here. Okay, dude, <laughs> it's, it's not important. We can do anything we want when we get to the foreground. <laughs> All right, the top edge of the clouds, though, this is going to be important. Just like when we work in watercolors, and I know a lot of you guys take my watercolor classes, just like when we work in watercolors, when we work in chalk pastels, we want to protect our lights. Okay, because it can get really muddy trying to put lights in the picture. Um, and chalk, although it does like to go on top of dark paper, if you're trying to put dark, um, trying to put white chalk on top of dark chalk, it'll keep mixing and muddying. Um, so you'll get a, a pure light color if you're not on top of a dark chalk. So, so I do wanna make sure, like when I get to these light clouds that I've protected that area and I haven't gone in and colored that with my blue or my gray or my purple or whatever I'm using, okay? So let's go ahead and kind of give ourselves um, the rough edge of these clouds. And I don't want you to worry too much about matching the picture. You can kind of make it up as you go. Um, I, I know I won't match it exactly, but I know I've got kind of a cloud here, right? I'm just using a tiny little circular motion. I'm not pushing really hard. Eventually we'll get to the point where I really try to find the point of my chalk pastel and I try to really dig in a highlight on this outside edge. But right now, right now I'm not worried about that. Right now I just wanna make sure that I've marked where it is so that I don't put a dark, a dark piece of something over the top of it, okay? Kind of my middle's right here, so let's make sure that I know where that is. Yeah, and we'll kind of come up. You do what you want. Your, your cloud can do anything, up and down and all around. It's really got kind of a, like a top edge that's highlighted, right? And then it has a few fluffy things that are floating around it. So let's make sure we make some of those fluffy things. Doo, 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 doo. Sound effects are not optional. They make it better. Everybody here makes sound effects when they draw. It's the truth. It's my orange easel people, they're all teaching right now. Every, every single one of us I think is teaching tonight. <laughs> Mondays are crazy, but um, when they watch this video later, I'm sure they'll chime in and say, yes, Allison, everybody makes sound effects because we all do. <laughs> Miss Grace makes the best sound effects though. Hers are the best. All right, so we kind of mapped in some, some fluffiness. Yeah. Those will get brighter. We'll, we'll really push hard and we'll really dig them in there. But right now, all we did was just make sure that we knew where they were going to be. I'm not worried about this area up here. So the upper part of the sky, kind of the, the half above the clouds, just kind of a ethereal, wispy, um, horizontal lines. We'll put those in. That'll be an easy part to put in. Actually, the most difficult part will be going around the clouds we just drew. Yeah? Okay. I'm gonna stop for just a second and make sure um, I know I got some people following along. I got my people in my Zoom class. So I'll make sure that everybody's doing all right. And if you have any questions, I'm just going to take a quick pause and take a drink of my LaCroix. And that way, it gives you a second to type without falling too far behind. <laughs> it's like everybody's all right. I like it. I like it. All right, so we're gonna build this up. We're gonna build it up into layers of color. Um, I Everybody does chalk pastels differently, right? Well, actually, let's just make that a blanket statement about art. Everybody does art differently and there's never only one way to do art. 
Um, so I'm going to tell you how I do chalk pastels and I'm a watercolorist. So I approach chalk pastels like I approach watercolors. Um, I work in layers. I work from um, kind of how oh, fuzziness of layers, sheerness of layers to more defined and more saturated colors. Um, the only difference in chalk pastels versus my um, watercolors that I do is the really, really bright whites. I will wait till the very end to put in. Um, I will protect them and make sure that they are defined, but I will wait till the end to put them in. And in watercolors, we, we put all our lights in first. So, all right, let's rock and roll people. Ready? I'm gonna start at the top of my page. I'm gonna put a sheer layer of color kind of all over this whole thing, um, just to kind of give me an idea of where I'm at. Um, I, I know I've got my corners taped down, you guys. So compositionally, this is a study picture. If, if it wasn't, I would make sure that, you know, like that wasn't going to cut off part of my picture, but I don't really care. It's fine. I'm going to use my purple because remember that was the color I decided was my mid-tone of my sky. I'm going to lay it here on my side and I'm just going to put down a, a nice even-ish layer of color. I'm going to avoid my little white clouds because I don't want those to be, I don't want them to be covered. I'm not gonna worry about, you know, I said we had these sun rays. Don't worry about those necessarily. We'll go ahead and put those in. That'll be the very last thing that we do. Um, but don't go over your, your little white fluffy clouds that you drew. And then be really careful also not to go over that white line that we drew for the top of your cloud. Don't, don't muddy that up. That's a really important highlight for us. Okay, so I'm using, when I go around my clouds, I'm using the, the kind of the point of my chalk pastel. When I'm up here at the top, I'm using the side. You can, you can move between the two. If you want to use the, the point when you're up at the top, you can do that. I usually um, apply very moderate pressure, so I'm not, I'm not pushing really hard. Um, I kind of go in little circles. Sometimes I work back and forth but I'm not pushing hard. So I want to put this up close to the camera so you can see. I've kind of got, see how like it doesn't completely cover the paper. You can still see the blue through it. If you're using white paper, you're going to see white through it. If you're using black paper, you're going to see black through it. And um, the reason we can still see that is because um, when I lay this flat and I run it around the top of the paper, my paper has, right, it has a texture to it. So the chalk only covers the, the, the kind of the peaks not the valleys in the paper. And that's okay. I like that. I like that about chalk pastels. We will get color into the valleys. It's, it's not a problem. That texture of our paper, we usually call the tooth, tooth of the paper. So we're just kind of laying down some purple color. We're going to we're gonna to continue to add layers here. We're also gonna use our fingers and blend it in. Do you know that when you work in chalk pastels and you work edge to edge, that they call it a painting? So if you're, if you're just sketching in pastels um, and you're doing drawing, it's called a drawing, right? So if I'm just I don't know, drawing a portrait or drawing a, um, you know, a, like a building where it's a lot of line, it's, it's, called a, it's usually called a drawing. But then when you start to do layering like this that we're doing here tonight, it's usually referred to as a painting. So now I'm going to use my finger um, and I'm going to do just one section here and I'm going to come up nice and close to the camera so you can see the difference. Um, by rubbing my finger very carefully, of course, because I don't want to smear my white part. But by doing that, I get all of the dust. There's a lot of dust here. Um, and I, I almost grind it into the valleys. Right? Look at the difference. See how much more uniform it is? So my finger helps take the dust that's sitting on top and it grinds it kind of down into the valleys of the paper. This gives us a good first coat. Now, if you don't like the, the chalky stuff on your fingers, um, I don't think you're alone in that, okay? Um, there are all alternatives. You can use a blending stick. You can use, um, use a Q-tip. 
right? Some people really like um, blending sticks and Q-tips because you can get into a little bit smaller areas too. I usually end up switching fingers, kind of get in there with my pinky. I'm gonna smooth all this out. Now, even after I finish this, there's gonna be a layer of dust that's loose on top and we're gonna need to get rid of that. So that way, you know, so that way it doesn't, it doesn't move into areas I don't want it. There's my hand, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off. So get that off there. One, two, all right, guys. There we go. And then I dry my fingers. So I don't want to go into here with wet, with wet hands. I'm gonna use my my and blow all of this stuff off here. So I just get it up next to my face and blow the chalk dust off the picture. All right. So we have one little layer up here at the top. Before I move down, we're gonna add just a little bit of um, depth to this. I'm going to use my white on top of my my purple. And if you'll see my picture, I've got just a few little wispy clouds that are in here. And I'm going to blend them into the, the purple that's up here. Can you see those? It's not much going on, just a little bit. Just kind of make some little lighter striations that go across kind of far away in the sky. Maybe they're far away clouds. Now, if you remember right, we said we had a dark color too. And that was our blue. So while I'm putting in some of our lighter color into the sky, I'm gonna also put in some of my darker color. Now all my, my lines right now are going horizontal. Like I said, the ones that ray like go out, we're gonna do it very, very last at the end. So let's put some, some darker colors in our sky. And again, I'm gonna go horizontal with these. A little bit of a shadow there. I see a little bit of a shadow down here. These ones, these shadows don't really go, like the white ones go across, right? These shadows are more patchy. I think mostly because they're intersected by the, the rays, but we'll get to that. Make sure that you guys can see the photo reference as well. If that's ever off the camera, let me know. Sometimes I forget where my camera window is. So I'll put a little bit of a shadow here. I love working from a photo reference, you guys, um, but I don't ever, I don't really copy it. Um, usually it's just a reference. So I don't want everyone to think that it matters if you match the colors perfectly because it really doesn't. Okay, as long as it works, you go ahead and play with these colors as much as you want. I'll put a little bit of dark back in here. Again, I'm avoiding the, the line, right? We did that line that went across the clouds. And then I'm avoiding kind of the cottony fluff balls that we also did in the sky. Where else is there a shadow? There's kind of one right here. Oh, and there's one over here. Do you see this one? Let's do this one. Kind of our horizontal lines. And then we'll soften them up and just blend them in. Wipe my fingers off a little bit. Don't let them get too crazy on you. I'm gonna shadow this, this corner up here. My left-hand corner is definitely darker than kind of this area here in the middle. So I'm just gonna blend in a little bit of the, for me, it's a blue. 
for you. Remember your, your dark sky color might be a purple or it might be a gray. You could have more than one color if you wanted to. I tried to really simplify this, but if you wanted to, to play with your sky having more colors in it, you could. You could have a purple and a gray and a blue going on here. The important thing is that you have a light and a dark, right? You got both of those things going on. That's what's important. You can see I'm going back into my, into my light to make sure that I didn't lose that. And I'll probably go back into my mid-tone too. So let's go back into the middle tones. Just make sure we don't lose those. Okay, take care of my fingers. I like it. I'm gonna blow the extra off of my, my paper, clean off my fingers, and then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move down the page here in just a second. Now, one of the things I didn't do is up in the kind of the upper part of the sky, there is some warm yellows, right? Can you see how some of the white in the photograph actually actually is kind of a cream tone it's a little bit warmer i kept mine very cool right because mine is just white and it's white on top of blue paper so it's a it's a cool tone if you want to you can go in with this uh, um, some of you might have a cream i know i have a cream chalk pastel um, you can go in with that and try to warm it up a little bit because i'm working on blue paper i'm really hesitant to use a lot of yellow um, i told my zoom class because i, I don't want it to turn green Right, so layering a, a yellowish pastel onto the blue paper will will be greenish. So, um, so that's why I'm not doing that on this one. So if you, but if you absolutely can, you can go in with your your cream and, or you could even go in and blend some yellow in the into your sky if you want to. Okay. All right, I'm going to work down into the clouds. I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to put the dark here on these clouds, right, and then I'm going to go back in with my with my white. Now that I've got kind of the sky around it, and I'm gonna circle in teeny tiny, just little cloud motions, right? So it's going around, 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 but much, much smaller. Um, and I'm just gonna try to make sure that these, these little puff balls here in the sky are the shape that I want. Now, as you color with these details, right, your chalk pastel will flatten, like wherever you're pushing, right, it flattens that side. So you wanna continue to roll your chalk pastel to find the pointy side. I'm gonna start with the dark. Okay. I'm also gonna start on the left side of my paper. That's one thing we didn't talk about with chalk pastels is um, you gotta be really careful not to lay your hand down because you'll end up with You'll end up with a mess. You'll end up smearing all of your stuff. Um, so you can see I keep mine up in the air or I just put one pinky down when I'm working just to rest it. Sometimes I'll also take this hand, right? So I've got my other hand and I will brace it. So that way it can stay up in the air. My other hand is holding it, okay? So it almost like acts like a lever. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this blue kind of all over these these clouds. Again, I'm going to try to avoid that white line. I don't, I don't want to mess up my white line at the top. There really isn't a worry about it at the bottom, but my white line at the top, I don't want to cover up. I probably will also might mix in a little bit of my purple into this blue just to kind of take the edge off of it. So it's not quite so like, whoa, that's blue. <laughs> Although I don't dislike it. That's, that's a pretty blue, it's like a royal blue. It doesn't match the picture, but like I said, it doesn't have to. If you're interested in like more uh, Chuck Pastel videos, I did 
This time last year, I did a dandelion um, still life with chalk pastels. I think it was actually in, yeah, it was probably in April because we were in our stay at home order and I did it at my house. But um, I went and picked dandelions out of my yard and then I drew them with chalk pastels. So it's a long video. I mean, I think I, I drew for probably about as long as this class. I think it was an hour and a half to two hours, but um, there's some really great like tips and process in there. Uh, there's also a time lapse of it on our YouTube channel if you want to just, you know, get the cliff notes. <laughs> so, so there's the dark, right? So similar to how we did the first layer in the sky, I did the first layer on my clouds. Um, before I flatten this down, right, with my finger, I'm going to mix in some of the purple. I'm using little cloud-like strokes, bitty bitty circles. Just like in painting our, um, you know, when your brush stroke matters in chalk pastel, your, your coloring stroke matters, right? So when we were going across on the sky versus what we're doing here with the clouds, we wanna make them look fluffy. And if you wanted this to be even duller, like you wanted to take the edge off some of the, the blue even more, you could, you could go over this with black as well. It's just like painting where, um, where you're mixing colors. It's just instead of mixing your color on the palette, we're mixing it right here on the page. So let me put this up close to the camera. I want to show you all the dust that is on here. There's a lot of dust. <laughs> I mean, it's just sitting on there, right? So I'm gonna use my, my little fingertips. You could also use a Q-tip. And in big spaces, you could use a cotton ball. And I'm gonna blend all of this together. Here we go. And again, I'm avoiding the, the white up here at the top. Just, you know, easier said than done, but do your best. And this is gonna leave a good amount of like little chalky dust all over it still. So when I go to blow it off, I'm not gonna blow forward because it's gonna blow it into all these white areas. I'm actually gonna blow it backwards. So I'll turn my, my page the other direction because uh, this part isn't done yet. So I'm not really worried about it. Okay. Woohoo. I wipe off my fingers. Let's go this way. And get up really close. Let's see, I have my shadowy. Yeah, those look so good. All right, let's go in with this white. I'm gonna do all the highlights again. Now, as I go over, if I my chalk pastel, watch this. See how white it is? I wiped it off, right? And here I go, and I'm going to take it into the blue a little bit, do a little blending. It's just like when you take a paintbrush into other paint. Look what happens to my chalk pastel. It gets dirty, which means if I take that blue and I come over here and I do one of these top little puff balls, it's going to turn that blue. So every now and then you got to wipe off your, your pastel, okay? Don't let it get really messy and dirty, especially if you're in um, light colors. When I'm not on camera, you guys, I usually use my, my pants. <laughs> I usually use my jeans to wipe off my chalk pastel. But when I'm on camera, I do better. Act like a grown up. Let's do the highlight right up here. Ready? So remember the first time we did the line at the top, we did it just kind of lightly just to mark it off. But now, now I want it to really stand out. So I'm gonna push real hard and I'm gonna find the pointiest point of my chalk pastel and I'm gonna dig it down in here. I'm gonna push real hard. You almost wanna make um, 
like short little strokes. So I'm going to let's see what I can use to demonstrate. Surely I have something. I don't even know. Um, okay, I'll use this because this one has a point to it and it's a little bit bigger, right? So when you go to make a nice, strong highlight or even a shadow, sometimes we do this with shadows too. You want to find the pointiest part and you want to put it down. You want to push really hard and then you want to rotate it so that you get, you know, like as much color as possible and the strongest amount of pigment down on the paper, okay? And it, you'll get the strongest one in short strokes, not in not in really like long strokes. If you're gonna do a long stroke, you have to keep rotating and, and spinning your, your chalk pastel, okay? And then since I'm going right next to this blue and I'm also on top of the sky, I have to make sure to keep um, wiping it off too, right? Because it, it picks up some of that color as I go across. These are my highlights. Some of it I don't mind blending in, right? There's some parts in my little picture where, now granted, these are different colors, right? Because again, this is a really warm sun lit cloud, right? Next to a warm grayish brown and I'm using blue. Very different colors, but totally works. So I can take that and kind of blend in as well. I just don't want to lose the highlight at the top. Then while I'm doing this, I'm gonna do the, the clouds, the little, remember the puff balls, I'm gonna do kind of the same thing. And again, these have some areas that are grayish, that are less light. So it's okay if some of them mix in with the background colors. If you wanna, this one right here, look at this. This one has a shadow right in it. So if we wanted to, we could take it and grab some of that purple and put a shadow in the middle of that little puffy cloud. Right, you can do that. I'm mostly working on just the top edge. So I haven't worried about the bottom edge yet. We'll get to that. If your clouds don't look very realistic, um, take a look at the, the picture and notice that this highlight here is not a consistent line. So some of it, that, that line that traces the top, some of it is thicker, some of it is thinner, some of it is broken where it completely almost disappears. Look right there, see how it just disappears right there. So you wanna make sure that your line does the same thing, right? So that there are times when it is more pronounced than others. All right, this won't be the last time we do these, this little line either, because when we go to do the like whoosh, 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 that'll also take away some of this bright um, highlight. It might get messed up a little bit. So don't stress out too much about it. Just, just do your best, do it till you like it. We can always come back. I might, some of my white areas up here, I might take and put a little bit of yellow on top just to test out the waters and see what happens. Remember I said yellow on top of blue paper might turn green, but if I put yellow on top of white chalk, I might be okay. As long as I have a thick enough layer of white chalk to go with it. So we shall see. I also have really blue clouds, so. <laughs> You know, it is what it is.
if we were painting this, maybe you would just wait till it dries because then you wouldn't have to, you know, you know, they won't mix up when they're wet. Maybe we'd wait till the acrylic dries or the oils dry or I don't know about the watercolors. The watercolors, they, they don't always dry the way you want them to. You gotta be careful not to rehydrate. So I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow in here. This is a cool yellow. I've got like a lemon yellow that I'm using. So this would be a little bit cooler than like a cadmium. All right, kids. Take a minute, I'm gonna blow off any extra. <laughs> We're gonna keep moving right on down the page. We have about an hour left, which is plenty of time. We'll stay live on Facebook for probably, not an hour, that's not right. Do the math, Allison, 40 minutes left. <laughs> we'll stay live on Facebook for about another half hour. I'm like, I teach a class at 7.30, that's not right. Um, so we'll stay on, live on Facebook for 20 minutes or so. And then I'm gonna cut back in and just talk to my Zoom people. But we should have plenty of time to finish this picture. We're done with the hard, hardest part, which is this, the clouds. And we're gonna do a similar technique, kind of like what we did up here, but we're gonna do it down here, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna protect my lightest areas, make sure my white chalk is nice and clean so I don't drag a bunch of blue into my sun, that would be bad. And I'm gonna go ahead and make my sun bigger than I think, because that'll help me protect my, my white area here on my page. I'm not even gonna, I got dust there, but I'm not gonna worry about blowing it because I don't mind if that dust mixes with my orange. You can use pink for this. You can use orange for this. You could use yellow for this. I wouldn't use yellow if you're using blue paper though, because you'll end up with a green sky. But even with the orange, um, the orange and blue are complementary colors. So we can end up with kind of some browns. Um, not really too worried about it because this orange is already brighter and more saturated than what we're seeing here in the in the sunset anyway. So, you know, if it tones it down a little, that's all right. I did kind of block off some of these, you know, areas where the trees stood up. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and kind of take my orange right up to that line and maybe a little bit across it, but I don't need to cover it completely. That'll make it easier to, to make my trees later if I don't put a layer of chalk pastel there. All right, so here's my first layer of orange. Boy, you can really tell, unlike the, the purple, boy, you can really see the blue through it and you can see that texture of that paper, right? Now, if I'm gonna go blend this, I need to make sure my hands are clean because I just finished all the blues. You don't wanna take blue fingers and go blend orange chalk pastel, that's, that's bad. So I wipe my hands, I dry my hands, make sure they're good. I'm gonna come in here. And I'm gonna try to get all that orangey dust pushed into the, the tooth, pushed into the valleys of this paper. I left a little bit of space too between the bottom edge of my um, cloud and the orange. I just kind of left a buffer. I'll probably end up putting a little bit of a highlight there, like a light orange highlight, but I just, I didn't do it yet. Get all this blended. You can see how much that tones down my orange, right? Because it's on blue paper. Almost a perfect match for that. All right, I'm gonna blow the extra off, but I don't wanna blow it into the clouds. So I'm gonna go this way. I also could have gone this way, but that's all right. Okay. 
I'm gonna do another layer of my orange in just kind of some important parts, right? So this area down here is a little bit more saturated in its orange color. According to the photograph, there's more orange down here. So go ahead and do that. Just like we did our, um, our upper part where we put in lights and darks, we're gonna do the same thing down here. Now, if you've got paper that isn't blue <laughs> and you would like to put yellow around your sun, you go right ahead. I'm gonna do a very careful job of putting some yellow around mine. You can put a whole ring of yellow and do some blending. I'm gonna be real careful of mine and not do that. Cause you know, yellow, blue, green. And mix that in just a little bit with my horizontal lines. See all my orange dust is everywhere here. I'm gonna switch fingers and I'm gonna mix a little bit of the orange in with the white. But not too much because I'm afraid I'll lose my white. I'm gonna put some more white from the center out. You can also use your chalk pastel to blend in with other chalk pastels. So you just have to be aware that just like your fingers, it will pick up what it's working on and, and move it. So like I'm, I've got orange on my, my white now, right? So I don't wanna go back into the middle of my sun after I do that. I can just keep going outward, but I can't go back in. Make sure my hands are clean because I'm going into the white area. Work our way out and blow. Okay. I'm gonna put a very little bit of yellow on mine. Kind of right on top of this. And the reason I can do it on top here is because it's not on top of blue, right? It's on top of orange, it's on top of white. Plain as amber. I'm gonna bring the yellow kind of around my sun and out just a little bit. Put that up close to the camera so you can see a little bit. Hi kiddo. Really careful, kind of blend that in. Now what's missing are all of my shadows, right? I, I, have, I have the brights in. I'm gonna use my purples to put in the shadows. That's kind of the same color that's around here. Um, so I'll use kind of the dusty purple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push really, really lightly. If the harder I push, the more pigment my my stick will lay down. I don't want a lot, you know, I just, I just kind of want to put a little bit of a shadow here in the sky. There's, there's kind of one that goes across here in this band. And you can use some creative licensing if you're looking at it and you're like, eh, I'm good, Elson, I don't want any shadows. Then don't put any. Nobody's going to see this picture. It's A-OK. -okay. Matter of fact, you can move them if you're like, oh, I'm going to put my shadow over here. You go right ahead. I'm gonna do this whole side over here kind of in purple because that's, that's kind of what's going on here on the, the right side on the lower part of the sky, right? Okay. And I don't really need to do my fingers right here on this part. Um, the, the pastel did it, you know, all on its own. It kind of blended it. It wasn't the first layer, so it didn't need me to push on it. Um, it's almost like using a, a paintbrush or a tool. Okay. I'm gonna take this gray color and just kind of walk it over here. It's like going for a walk. Put a little shadow here at the bottom. Now, the one part I do wanna get is there are some clouds in here. So then instead of using the side of the pastel, I'm gonna use the tippy tippy point and I am gonna push hard and I'm gonna draw myself and kind of short strokes. I'm gonna draw myself some long, skinny, far away clouds. 
There aren't very many, but just a couple. Okay, I'm gonna blow on that. What that looks like. If you wanna get crazy, you can use some of your dark color. For me, it's the blue. You can put a little bit of shadow on those clouds. If you don't, you don't have to. Put a little bit of shadow down here. You can also put a little bit of a highlight on those clouds, right? So they've got some areas here where there's maybe a highlight. Again, I'm gonna use the very, like the pointiest part I can find and make sure my white is nice and clean. And I'm just gonna drag it in as few strokes as possible across the top of that cloud. Okay, you can't, you can't work back and forth. If you try to work back and forth on it, um, you have already got color on that pastel. Right, so the more I rub it around, the more that white is not pure. It's like working into wet paint. It's not wet paint, it's dry chalk, but it's the same kind of thing. So I'm gonna dig in some white clouds here. So just push on this. Almost like making faraway birdies, not really. <laughs> oh, somebody's printing. I hear my printer going. I wonder who this is, this is Grace. Here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who's printing. Somebody's somebody's printing on my printer next. <laughs> it's not Miss Grace, I don't think. I already printed all her stuff. All right, let me show you what I have so far here. Kind of in my faraway little clouds. Got to know when to stop, but they are kind of fun to put in. A little bit of white all over the space. All right, I'm going to finish this lower edge. Remember I said on the lower edge of my clouds, I wanted a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to finish that. And I'm going to start, there's two ways to go around it. I know I want to mix together my orange and my white Whoops. to make that edge. I can either start with orange and add white, or I can start with white and add orange. I'm going to start with white and add orange to it because I would rather have the orange on top of the white. We'll just kind of take this here to the side all along the edge of my clouds. I'm gonna very carefully take my, my finger. I'm gonna soften that edge. I might take the white again and do it again. Right, because this one kind of blends with the blue, which is cool. I also want it to kind of blend with the orange. Oh, this is so pretty, you guys. Let's go a little bit, a little bit more with the white, and then we'll put some, put some orange with it. One thing I got to be careful of is I got to notice the, the edge here, right? It's really easy for me to take and just make it a diagonal line, but it's not really a diagonal line. So if we look at our photo reference and we see that, you know, it's, it's a little bit wobbly. It's a little bit broken. I mean, in general, it's a diagonal line, but we wanna make sure that, you know, nothing in nature is too perfect. So here we go. I was doing that and I was looking at my photo. I noticed that there's a little bit of white highlight going on over here. So I just really quickly just put that in in case you were wondering what I did there. Now let's put some orange. So this orange, I'm gonna lay right on top of that white. I'm not gonna push very hard. I'm really trying with the tip of my chalk pastel to blend into that, that some of that white, not all of it, but some of that white. Um, and I want to make sure that I try not to get it into the blue too much because, you know, that just, that just makes it brown. Okay. Put that up kind of close so you guys can see it. Blow off the extra. 
we're almost done. All right, we got the foreground left to do. And we got the really fun sun rays. Okay, so for my foreground, I'm going to use a mixture of my my two like darker colors. So I want to do this first row of hills in kind of a mixture of the dark blue and the purple. And then I want to do the the trees in my in my black. And if you want to do your trees in green, you absolutely can. So this is probably the easiest part because we're not going to get too in depth with this. We're not going to get into, you know, putting highlights and lowlights or shadows. It's just going to be just going to be a, a flat, solid color off into the distance. Now, the reason our hills that are the furthest away are lighter than the ones closer up is because of the atmosphere. So things that are further away actually look lighter. Sometimes people think it's supposed to look darker, but it doesn't. It looks lighter. If you've ever driven in the car and you're looking out, especially in the Midwest, because we can see so far away, um, you look way out by the horizon, and you'll notice that the tree furthest away from you actually looks lighter than the tree closest to you. It looks lighter and it looks less saturated. It'll look grayer. So we don't see colors that far away. Okay. So I'm just going to make this nice and flat. I'm not even going to worry too much about what's going on. I do like, hang on, let me blow this. I do like in the picture, there's a little bit of a reflection. If you can see that or right here. You see how that goes into the, the trees. So when we do our other stuff, when we come up here and do that, we might do a couple down into the into the foreground as well. All right, let's do my my trees here in the foreground. I'm gonna start just by blacking out everything that's right here in the front. Be the darkest part of my picture. Similar to my first layer that I did in the, the lower part of the sky and the upper part of the sky, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the, the tooth, right? You're gonna see the blue paper showing through or the black paper or the gray paper or the white paper, whatever you're using. Uh, so I'm gonna use my, my finger and try to kind of grind in some of that dust so that, okay, I'm gonna stop the printer. Somebody's gonna have to come and get it. <laughs> it just keeps going. There we go. And then when we get to these evergreen trees, you guys, we're gonna channel our inner Bob Ross. Are you ready? <laughs> Stop printing. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm gonna grab my black. We're gonna put some happy trees here. So we're just gonna come straight up with some of our trunks, yeah? And then we're gonna haphazardly put some, hello. What's that? I printed some weird things. Yeah, I wasn't sure what you were doing, so I finally just stopped it. <laughs> So much. I was just going for large images. Like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm just filling in my trees with the the tip 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 of my black pastel, right? So I got to keep rotating it in order to get a point. Can't really see that on the black. Let's use it a different one because the black is too dark to show on camera, right? So I I use this corner and then I rotate it and I use this corner. Then I use this corner and I rotate it, right? So you just keep flipping it until you get to a sharper edge. Um, if you really get into tuck pastels, you can get a, um, uh, they make little like sandpaper, I don't even, it's like a paddle that you can carry with you and you can rub your, your tuck pastel or your charcoal on the sandpaper to get it to come to a point. It obviously it wastes some of your tuck pastel doing that, but if you really need a point, that's, that's one way to do it because it's not like we can stick it in a, in a sharpener, right? All right, so these little dots that I'm making here, you guys, we're not gonna blend these. This is 
This is going to stay nice and right defined. It's not going to get fuzzy. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, let's make another one over here. I want to make sure that all of my edge here, this edge that I made in the black, um, is defined by some of these little trees. Some of them come up higher than others. You don't have to follow the picture. Don't feel like you have to. If it makes sense to put a tree there, put a tree there. And if it doesn't, don't worry about it. Nobody's going to see this picture, OK? Sure. Except for somebody that watches this video. And they're not going to remember. It's going to be all good. <laughs> makes good noises. Da, 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 da. This way I don't have to make sound effects because my chalk pastel is doing it for me. So you can see I left this part right here. See my little triangle there? I left that open so that I could come up here and put a tree in it. Da, 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 da. So I will probably, because this inside of this big old tree is probably going to be pretty darn black. It's really only the outside that you need the dots on. I'll probably just, let's just turn that on its side and fill it in. Yeah, here we go. It's so much faster. <laughs> I love chalk pastels, you guys. This is so pretty. Da, 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 da. So you want to get better at chalk pastels, it's just like anything else. You need to practice, 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 practice. There's some really great YouTube videos, too. Um, they'll step you through some different techniques. I, we do not have a regular chalk pastel class, but I would not be opposed to it because it's so much fun. Um, and it's such a, um, I don't know, I was going to say approachable medium, but but it's not as intimidating as like some others, right? Because it's a drawing medium, but it doesn't feel like drawing. It feels like painting. Like, I don't feel like you have to, like if I had said, draw this in um, charcoal or draw this in chalk pest or in um, colored pencils, I think people would be intimidated by it, but it feels like you're painting when you're laying down colors like this. So I don't know. Chalk pastels are great too to take in like on the road if you do any in plain air art, you do any art outside um, when you're you know out and doing art from observation. Chalk pastels are great for that. They travel really well. And I'd say that they're not messy, but they are. They're so messy. <laughs> but people don't think they are, so they're more likely to try them. All right, here we go. I'm gonna wipe off my fingers really good because man, they got a lot of black on them. So Give me a second while I do that. I'm also going to blow all this chalk dust off of here. I'm not going to blow it northward, right? I don't want to blow it into my sky because that would, it'll settle in there. I mean, it won't be obvious, but it'll dull your picture. So I am going to make sure that I blow it, you know, the other way. Yeah. Here we go. All right. So we're kind of down just to like finishing touches here on our on our picture. So let me let me do the the really fun part here. I got to make sure my hands are really clean be before I do that. But we want to do these little rays of of light that come off of the sky. And if you're doing them in a cream color or a warm color, you can. I'm going to do mine in in white because my um, my paper is toned blue and I don't want to I don't want to mess them up. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to lay down a little bit of color. Like here's a good one. Yeah. And then we're going to use my finger. And I'm going to go. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And we just get a ray of, it, the, the, again, the sound effects count. We get a ray of, of light going up there. Okay. We want to be really intentional in this. Don't go nuts. Um, you know, think about each, each one that you do and where you're dragging and, um, and what you're dragging, right? 
So I pulled a little bit of this, whoops, of this little white cloud. So I wanna make sure that I go back in and kind of redefine that, right? Cause when I took it and I went whoosh like this, it got smudgied. So let's see where else could we do one. Let's do one, let's do one right here. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna use my chalk pastel. I'm gonna lay down just a little bit of color. Okay, and you can do it either on the side because my chalk pastel is so tiny or you can do it with the point. You wanna barely tickle the paper because we're just laying down enough that we can then blend and move. We don't wanna lay down a line necessarily. Hands are clean. And we're gonna clean our hands after every one of these, right? Because when I go across, it picks up the purple. Get a little bit of sunshine there. Again, I wanna go through and Kind of redig in some of those clouds and make sure that they are on top of those sun rays. Hands are clean, hands are dry too. And there. You can do as many of these as you want to or as few. I'm gonna do one right here, kind of right from the middle. I'm gonna follow it through the cloud. And you can look at the, the photo as a reference, but I really encourage you to just look at your picture and decide where you where it makes sense for them to be. Okay. I want one. Right here. And rounds. Trying to make sure it all kind of comes from the same focal point. Let's get one going this way. I think angles matter, don't you? Maybe I didn't quite get that angle. Let's, let's re-angle that one. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go in here and just put a little bit more white in. Remember I said I wanted to put a little bit of orange coming off of here, I'm gonna do it. We'll see if it works. Problem is I have my trees. I gotta be careful of my trees. All right. I think that that is gonna be it for me. Um, I could play with this all day and, and you can continue to add stuff. You can continue to layer stuff um, back on top. And um, I feel like sometimes it's like watercolors and you have to know when to stop, but um, you don't always know where that point is until you've crossed it. So if that happens to you, take it as a learning experience. It's all right. It happens to the best of us. All right. All right. So that's the end of my picture. Let me um, let me get back to just my face. I'll say goodbye to my, my Facebook audience. And then I'm going to come back to my Zoom audience spotlight for you guys here. Fabulous. Awesome. So this is my, my finished little chalk pastel painting. So if you guys are interested in learning more about um, online art classes, and if this kind of format works for you, we are here almost 20 times a week, live on camera with our Zoom audience, teaching watercolors and drawing and painting and all sorts of things. Works for kids and adults. So we'd love to have you join us. Creation Nation is opening for new members starting Wednesday. So you can reach out to us or check out the website under online art for more information. All right. All right. I'm going to say goodbye to my Facebook people. Zoom people, hang tight. I'm coming right back. I'm going to end my, my live broadcast, but I, I, I don't really know where to go to do it. So give me a sec. <laughs> like, like, I know it's in here somewhere, but I don't know where. So it's cool. It's cool. I want to get back to my stop live stream. I found it. Bye, Facebook. Oh.